Welcome to Food for Thought, the place to explore, celebrate, and manifest a life motivated and defined by unconditional compassion and optimal wellness. Today's episode, part of the Meaningful Life series, is Make a Vow and Renew It Regularly. Before we begin, hi everyone, my name is Colleen Patrick Goudreau. You can find me at joyfulvegan.com. You can find me on social media. You can find my books wherever books are sold, and you can join me in my online cooking classes. You can find them at joyfulvegan.com as well. You can also find my vegan trips around the world at joyfulvegantrips.com. This podcast, as I say, every week is possible because of the support of listeners like you. There are no sponsors or ads on Food for Thought, and with your help, I can keep doing this podcast and doing it ad-free. If this is something you value, please join other supporters by going to patreon.com slash Colleen Patrick Goudreau to become a supporter today at your chosen level. One of the perks is a discount to the online cooking classes I just mentioned. So be sure to check your Patreon account for those coupon codes. And another perk is that you get the transcripts to the podcast episodes. So thank you so much in advance for supporting, for subscribing, and for listening to Food for Thought. I am thrilled to say that the June 2022 Northern Italy trip, Mountains, Lakes, and Canals, has reached its minimum number of signups, so it's 100% a go. Uh, There are four spots left, so if you don't want to miss out on this magical trip, uh, please go to joyfulvegantrips.com and book your spot today. I'm also thrilled to announce that our Rwanda November 2022 trip, Gorillas, Chimpanzees, and Luxury Ecotourism, and yes, that is a thing, and I can prove it to you, has reached its minimum. So if you'd like to experience this once-in-a-lifetime trip with me to an incredible country, Rwanda is really just quite breathtaking, then book your spot today also at joyfulvegantrips.com. And finally, if you want to join me, but only virtually, you can register for one or both of my online cooking classes coming up for the end of 2021, the only two classes I'm teaching at the end of 2021, which is the Thanksgiving feast and the joy of holiday baking. And if you sign up for both, you can bring a friend for free. So just go to joyfulvegan.com and register for those classes. Now on to business. I'm writing this episode on the 20 year anniversary of my marriage to my husband, David. You have met either on the online classes because he usually comes in and teaches a cocktail, or you've met him on one of the trips if you've joined us on any of the trips, or if you've just seen any of my social media posts, you have seen him. Um, He is really, truly one of the most incredible people I know, and I'm so grateful to be married to him. And so I wanted to talk about wedding vows because David and I are renewing our vows to each other for our 20th wedding anniversary. We did the same thing in our 10 year wedding anniversary. And I want to be really clear that this is not something you create only in marriage or even in a romantic relationship. You can create vows, you can create intentions in platonic relationships, even in professional relationships. A vow is a promise and a pledge And I think it's even more than that. I actually think it's a willingness to orient yourself toward a higher goal, right? Because the vow itself isn't the point. It's what I am vowing to live up to. So I see the vows as a framework, as a blueprint that enables you to reach the higher end, right? They're kind of the intentions and then there's the goal. So when David and I got engaged to be married in 2000, we got engaged in 2000, it was six years into our relationship. Of course, one of the things you start working on right away is the wedding, right? So yes and no. For me, one of the first things I wanted to create, and this was back in 2000, was our intention, not just for the wedding, but for our marriage, Right, because after all, a a wedding is a one day affair, whereas our marriage would hopefully last the rest of our lives. And so that's what we did. We created a vision statement for our wedding so that anytime we had to make a decision about something, and of course, planning an event like a wedding, uh, you have to make a lot of decisions. Uh, we could look back at our vision statement and see if that decision was in alignment with our with our vision. And it made things a lot easier to manage and it made decisions a lot easier to make. So we had our intention for the wedding itself and next it was time to create our intention for our marriage. And that comes in the form of the vows. 
I was really excited to work on the vows. I really love creating intentions. You've heard me talk about them before a number of times. And I was really excited to work on these vows, the wording of them, the meaning behind them. And one of the things that became clear very quickly is, like I said, the vows are not there for their own sake. I'm not promising something for its own sake. Uh, I'm promising something uh, toward this higher purpose, toward this higher end. And that higher purpose is to love as deeply and as well as possible. Now, that might seem like enough to just say, well, my goal is to love you as well as I can love you. But I don't know about you, um, but saying like, I commit to loving you as best as I can, sounds a bit vague to me. Like, what does that mean? Right? Like, what does that mean specifically to love someone? And again, I mean this romantically and platonically. I'm speaking specifically about my romantic relationship with my husband, but this could, this pertains to platonic and even professional. What does it mean to, to aspire to love someone? What does that mean specifically. And I think writing vows provides an opportunity to answer that question, to answer those questions about what does this mean to love you? Uh, what is it? What does that look like in a very specific way? Now, that's going to be different for everyone. That's why writing our vows is such a special opportunity. Because for some people, it might mean like, I want to be supported and heard, like that might be more important to someone than being told that I'm loved and being held. I mean, everybody has a different uh, desire in terms of how they want to be loved and how they want to love. So it's so customized. And it's what I love about writing these vows. Everyone has different roads that lead them to the ultimate goal of loving that person as well as they can. And so that's what I mean when I say this can be done platonically uh, as well. What does it look like to be the best friend I can be to you, to be the best partner, to be the best daughter, to be the best mother, to be the best husband, to be the best wife, to be the best father, what have you? What does it mean for me as the giver? And what does it mean for you as the receiver? And so vows are an opportunity to answer those questions. They become the touchstone to return to as a reminder to cultivate those specific intentions rather than just like, well, but I love you. Well, what does that mean? I don't feel it. So what does that mean specifically? And we all need to do that. We all need to create these intentions. We all need to answer those questions specifically because again, it's different for each person, both as the giver and as the receiver. And we all need reminders. I know I do on a regular basis <laughs> uh, so that we can turn to, to uh, that person and say, I'm doing the best I can. And this is what my understanding is in terms of what you told me is meaningful for you. And that's what I'm trying to fulfill. That is one of the values of writing out your vows. And one way I'm reminded of them is obviously to be able to refer to them easily. And while I haven't memorized our vows, I don't know what I'm waiting for, because I've talked about the value of memorizing things that are meaningful. It did occur to me this morning on this anniversary of our 20th wedding uh, that it's probably time to memorize our vows, which I haven't done. So I'm committing to that right now. Okay, uh, but I haven't memorized them. But what I did do right after we were married is that I had a calligrapher write out the vows and then we framed them and they're beautiful and they hang prominently in our bedroom and they have hung prominently in our well this bedroom now here and in our old bedroom in our old house since we were since the wedding I mean really since that time since 2001 and I don't mind sharing them with you here and now because I want to refer back to them so I'll read you what our vows are Okay, obviously David would say it to me, I would say it to him, so I'll just read both. I, David, take you, Colleen, to be my wife, my partner, in body, mind, and spirit. And I read, I, Colleen, take you, David, to be my husband, my partner, in body, mind, and spirit. From this day forth, I commit my love to you and vow to nurture, support, and respect you with integrity and love. As we continue this journey together, I promise to be a sanctuary to you, embracing all sorrows and joys, all challenges and triumphs, all the experiences of life. My commitment is made in love, kept in faith, lived in hope, and eternally made new. 
Now we do hopefully eternally make it anew every time we <laughs> aspire to love each other well in our everyday lives. Uh, and then we do it very intentionally in these vow renewals because we did it at our 10 year vow renewal and we're doing it again at our 20. Now I will admit there are have been times in our marriage, this may probably hopefully not come as a shock to you, when I have not acted from my highest place. I'll speak for myself. I'll let David speak for himself, but um, I feel like he always acts from his highest place. <laughs> um, but there have been times when I have not acted from my highest place and living up to that vow. And it's been David who has returned us back to our vows, reminding us that we're not doing what we promised to do, especially that promise to be a sanctuary to each other. That's always been a poignant image for me in these vows. And so we have reviewed and renewed and revisited our vows often uh, in good times and in bad and most intentionally on these wedding anniversaries. We were married in 2001, just after the terrorist attacks uh, on 9-11. So we were married in November. The terrorist attacks in New York, of course, and, and elsewhere in D.C., were uh, um, on November on September 11th, and uh, it did affect our wedding day. Uh, as much as many people canceled, um, we uh, grew up in New York and New Jersey, and so most of our friends are in New York and New Jersey, and they were obviously in the shadow of the terrorist attacks in uh, in New York. And of course, I understood that people felt scared uh, to fly and yet it was still difficult to hear one person after another cancel and we had many people who did come so we were very grateful to those people who did come including our family but I do remember saying to myself <laughs> and that on that day that we were going to renew our vows every 10 years and so here we are. In 2011, David and I renewed our vows for our 10-year wedding anniversary, and many friends and family came out to celebrate, including David's parents and his sister and my mom. It was a beautiful day. After a very hard year, 2011 was not my favorite, at least the second half of the year. It's not my favorite six months. <laughs> Plus, uh, in July, my dear friend Michael died unexpectedly and tragically. You've heard me tell that story. In August, just actually a few days later after Michael died, my beloved Kat Schuster died. And in October, I was confronted by a lawsuit over my book, The 30 Day Vegan Challenge, which, as many of you know, was taken out of print for no fault of my own. It was from a place of, of greed and vindictiveness uh, on the part of another party. Um, but I had no control over it, and it was a devastating time, a really rough time. And the vow renewals were certainly a balm. Uh, we hosted the renewals in the backyard of our old house, officiated by our dear friends, John and Randy, who had been part of our wedding. And as a token of renewal, we had had our wedding bands inscribed with the last line of a favorite aria from a favorite opera. The opera is uh, Tosca, Puccini's Tosca, and the aria is Recondita Armenia. And the line is Il mio solo pensiero se tu, which is I think only of you. So we had Il mio solo pensiero se tu, uh, inscribed, engraved inside of each of our wedding bands. And it was a way to, again, kind of renew this commitment. And we had Sanctuary Bistro, it was a vegan restaurant that's no longer around here. Um, and uh, they catered and tea aunts was a, is a, a tea house, they served tea, we had a tea house built in our old uh, 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 yard. It sounds elaborate, but we, instead of, I don't know, some people build a deck, we built a tea house. <laughs> so um, we had tea aunts serve tea in that tea house and it was absolutely lovely. This year, in fact, the day I'm recording this on November 3rd, um, we celebrate our 20 year wedding anniversary. And on Saturday, a number of friends are coming over into our new house uh, to celebrate and witness our vow renewals. This house we're in um, partly was a way to not only renew our lives together, but also to renew. It was a renewal having come from a really hard time that, as I said, 2011 was a very difficult time. So we're now in this new house that we've been in almost 10 years, which we cannot believe that we love so much. And it's a huge part of our lives now. And it's been a huge part of our 
this phase of our lives. So a number of our friends are coming to our backyard. Uh, sadly, the only people who um, for whom the date did not work are our friends, John and Randy, who, as I said, officiated our 10-year vow renewals and were there at our wedding. Uh, but we are having some faraway friends join us on Zoom, including some of our friends who are at our wedding and in our wedding. And, and then celebrating with 35 uh, of, our, of our close friends here now. The absence of my mother is probably most notable. Had she lived, had she not died in 2020, she no doubt would have been here with us. And David's parents are now older and his mother is having health issues and she's no longer mobile. So they won't be here with us, but 35 friends gathering outside in our back garden, they will be here to celebrate, to restore, and to renew the vows we made 20 years ago. And as we've been working on the details for the event itself, and this time Millennium Restaurant is catering, the menu is amazing. Uh, but as we were working on the details of the event, but, but especially, again, the ceremony, David and I asked the question, do we need to update or modify or change the vows we wrote 20 years ago? And we looked at those vows that I just read to you and read them out loud. And our answer was no, which you can do. <laughs> you, you can revisit. You can say, oh, maybe we want to deepen this over here and say this over here. And I would encourage you to do that if that is, is what resonates with you. But for us, we actually felt the time we took in 2000 and 2001 to create these vows still hold up uh, or, or uh, allowed these vows to hold up trying to construct my sentence properly. Uh, so we feel that the vows still hold up and the commitment we made and, and, and the specifics of the commitment and how we phrased it. Uh, perhaps even more so 20 years later, there is definitely a deepening. We are also talking about you know what the last 10 years have meant, what the last 20 years have meant. And last night we were talking about it. I feel like I'm going to cry because <laughs> one of the things we talked about was... Uh, was what characterizes the last 10 years especially, but you know, overall 20 years, is, is, is a deepening of, of who we are individually and who we are as a couple. And we just keep going deeper into that. And we do feel closer to each other today, closer even than we did 10 years ago, I think. And that's a gift. And we're very grateful for that. We do cultivate this as much as we can. Again, we're not perfect by any stretch, but we do at least commit to cultivating our, 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 our love for one another and our commitment to one another. And so one thing we did to symbolize that this year for our 20 year wedding anniversary is we made anew the ring David gave to me when he proposed now 21 years ago, it would have been in 2000. And while I had pointed out a few different kinds of rings I liked prior to him proposing, again, we were together six years by the time he proposed. So around year six, we started dropping hints and you know, looking at, oh, I like this kind of ring and I like that kind of ring. But in the end, David picked out the ring for me, um, bless his heart, that wasn't really the right fit for me, but I just couldn't fathom telling him that. He picked it out himself and he surprised me with it. Believe me, I was surprised. If I've never told you the proposal story, it's kind of hilarious. That's for another time. <laughs> so I always felt bad not loving the setting of this ring. Uh, while our wedding bands were white gold, the engagement ring was platinum. So it was very heavy, it was very dense, and the setting itself was very high. Um, so high that I had to turn it around when walking with friends, lest I scrape them by accident when we're walking, right, when our arms are swinging. And it was so high that I couldn't sleep with it because I would, you know, rest my head on my hand. And so it would just it was too high. And so I took it off all the time. And in taking it on and off so much, it began to hurt my knuckle. And so I would go weeks and months without wearing it. And that made me sad. So it became, it was really this, um, <laughs> it just, it was always, I was always very aware of the ring in a way that was, that was uncomfortable. And that made me sad. So as we were nearing our 20th anniversary, so it has a happy ending. As we were nearing our 20th anniversary, David and I um, talked about having my diamond reset uh, into a new setting altogether. So the, the original setting was just one single diamond. 
uh, it wasn't even a full carrot. So don't like this. I, I always feel a little indulgent when I talk about this, but it it was it was a single diamond and then some baguettes on either side, and uh, and so we talked about having that diamond reset into a new setting all together, and so that's what we started planning for in 2020. And I started looking for sustainable jewelers I could work with here in Oakland for this purpose. And then my mother died in early 2020. And after she died, I wanted to give a gift to uh, my mother's, one of her aides, uh, who just took such good care of her and her loved her so much. And so I, so I, in the same quest for a sustainable jeweler for my wedding, uh, for the engagement ring, I was also looking for a, a, a jeweler who was committed to sustainable ethics for this piece of jewelry. I figured a piece of jewelry would be a really lovely gift for uh, Tara. And so I found uh, this company, well, company, it's a single jeweler. She, her name is Kate, and her, her the name of her business is Crown Nine. And I really, really want to encourage you to go over to her website, which I believe, and I'm going to confirm right now while we're here, is I think it's crown9.com. It's crown-9.com. So just type in Crown Nine Jewelers and you will find her. And so she doesn't just do, by the way, engagement and wedding rings, but that is part of what she does um, and, and can obviously customize them for you. But she also has just pieces you can buy, bracelets, necklaces, rings, chains. Uh, and her, her ethic is just her ethic is incredible and her designs are just beautiful and just so lovely. And so um, I ordered a necklace through Kate, through her website that was just a, like a, it was, a, I think it was a silver chain, but a gold ring, it, you know, on this chain, it was just a, a circle and then a silver circle inside of that one, just symbolizing the unity of, of two people. And so I bought this for Tara and I asked Kate if I could leave a note with her that she would write in a card when she sent the necklace to Tara. And she said, of course, she got back to me right away and said, no problem. And then a couple weeks later, I hadn't heard from Tara yet, and I didn't want to ask her if she had gotten, you know, have you received a box for me? Like, I just didn't want to ask her. So I was just waiting. But in the meantime, I got a box from Crown Nine, and I opened it up, and it was the same necklace. And I thought, oh, gosh, did she, what, ha what, did she not, did she send it to me instead of Tara? But I opened the card, and the card was from Kate. <laughs> and Kate wanted me to have the same necklace in memory of my mother, that I had given to Tara. So yeah, like amazing, thoughtful, compassionate, so lovely. And so I was just like, yeah, I want to keep working with her. She's just incredible. So then I reached out to Kate and we had started having virtual meetings around uh, the engagement ring. And, and Kate eventually left Oakland and moved to Sebastopol, which is about an hour or so north of us in Sonoma County. And when we came time to start actually working on this, I had virtual calls with her. So if you do want to work with someone who you know redesigns rings or designs rings or jewelry or what have you, you can work with her wherever you are. I think internationally is difficult, but you can certainly work with her um, if you're in the United States. You don't have to just be in California. But we did work on the design together. And it's really off of a design that Kate already had on her website. I just loved it so much. And uh, and we went up and she, you know, we, we, I looked at the, you know, it was between that, it was between two rings that I was choosing between. I decided on one, went up there and looked at it in person. And, and then she worked on it and created it, designed it. And then uh, just last Saturday, David and I went up to uh, pick up the ring and I have been wearing it ever since. I haven't taken it off, which is incredible because I would take the other one off every, uh, all the time. Like it was so heavy and this one's white gold and it's just a lower setting and it feels like it's part of my finger. And now it's just, it's just so much just more appropriate for me and, and I love it so much. So it's an incredible gift from David, from Kate, and I love the symbolism of renewal, just like we are doing with our relationship. The, the symbolism of, of making this ring anew, just like we're making our vows anew, but, we're, but it's a deepening. It's taking something that we already had as a foundation and just making it deeper and making it more appropriate for where we are today in our relationship. So I share all of this with you in the hope that you can glean something from it uh, in your own life. Uh, you know, I, as I said, I don't want 
want this to feel like just an indulgent story about my relationship with David. It really is about trying to pass on to you what I think might be something that you could take. And if not, great. If you know, if, if so, great. Um, but the idea of intentions is something, you know, I've talked about a number of times, both in this podcast or in my books, I've talked about creating intentions when just navigating this world, whether you're vegan or not vegan, doesn't matter. Just navigating this world with other people, uh, creating intentions, I think is the most uh, helpful thing I can do. It's one of the things that I turn to when things aren't going well, when I want to just create an intention for the day, especially. And I can say when things don't go well, or when I behave differently than I would have liked, or in a way that I'm not proud of, one of the things I can say went wrong is that I did not adhere to or make an intention. It's one of the reasons I love starting my day with a love and kindness meditation. It just orients you to a higher place. And that's what I think creating intentions, creating vows does, is a way to orient us to acting from our highest place. So whether it's a romantic relationship, a platonic relationship, even a professional relationship, creating this intention, creating a blueprint for how you'd like to be, for how you'd like to love, for how you'd like to manage is a really helpful, I think, and meaningful thing to do. I can only speak for myself about what works for me, but there it is. Creating an intention and creating a vow uh, has been one of the best things I've done. Well, m marrying David has been one of the best things I've ever done. And then finding ways to cultivate that relationship has been the next best. And after that, committing myself to living the most compassionate life possible and empowering others to do the same, that is what I've been committed to. And that has always been my intention. And I hope I'm living up to that commitment to you. My intention has always been to speak my truth, to raise awareness and to be a voice for animals. And I revisit that intention, those intentions every time I write and record a podcast episode here. So thank you for letting me renew that commitment to you. Uh, thank you for letting me do that by being a listener and a subscriber and uh, possibly a supporter to Food for Thought. For the animals, this is Colleen Patrick Goodrow. Thanks for listening.